This is Red Carpet Flies News on the Fly, bringing you daily unique and interesting entertainment, celebrity, and luxury news. Before we get started, you guys know what to do. Like, follow, and subscribe to Red Carpet Fly, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss a single News on the Fly episode. Okay, let's get into it. We lost a celebrity recently, so I want to take a second to recognize one of our fallen stars. Emilio Delgado, the actor whose decades-long portrayal of Sesame Street's fix-it shop owner, Luis Rodriguez, endeared him to generations of young viewers and was a pioneering force in TV's depiction of Mexican-Americans, died in New York City yesterday, just two years after being diagnosed with blood cancer, multiple melanoma. He was 81 years old. I remember seeing Emilio on Sesame Street growing up. He will greatly be missed. R.I.P. Emilio Delgado. More award shows coming in 2022. Meg Thee Stallion, John Legend, Charlie Puth, Moleskin, and more are set to perform at 2022 iHeartRadio Music Awards. According to Variety, iHeartRadio has set performers for the upcoming 2022 iHeartRadio Music Awards with Meg Thee Stallion, Jason Aldean, John Legend, Charlie Puth, and Moleskin all newly announced to perform on the March 22nd telecast. The five join two other artists who were previously announced for roles in the event and are now confirmed for performances as well. Host LL Cool J, who teased a special performance for the night, and Jennifer Lopez, who will be receiving the iHeartRadio Icon Award during the ceremony. Meg Thee Stallion, Al Dean, and Moleskine all have three nominations each. Meg is nominated in the Hip Hop Artist of the Year category, as well as the fan voted categories of Top Fan Army and TikTok Bop of the Year for her hit single, Thought Shit. Aldine is nominated for the Country Artist of the Year, and his duet with Carrie Underwood, If I Didn't Love You, is recognized in the Collaboration and Country Song categories. Italian band Moleskin is recognized in the New Pop Artist and New Alternative Artist categories, as well as TikTok Bop category for its song, Beggin. The ceremony will air live on Fox from the Shrine Auditorium in Los Angeles on March 22nd at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. A delayed taping of the ceremony will air at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on the West Coast. The event will also be available to listen on all iHeartRadio radio radio stations nationwide as well as on the iHeartRadio app. The awards celebrate the most played artists and songs across iHeartRadio stations and the iHeartRadio app. This year's nominations are led by Justin Bieber, who is up for the Best Male Artist and has two entries for the Song of the Year, Peaches and Stay. Other artists with multiple nominations include Doja Cat, Olivia Rodrigo, and Silk Sonic. Additionally, the Tony Awards returns to its regular date and place. In another sign that show business is snapping back to its pre-pandemic rhythm, the Tony Awards will once again take place in June and at the familiar location, Radio City Music Hall. In a HuffPost article, the Broadway League and the American Theater Wing announced Wednesday that the awards will be handed out on June 2nd and aired on CBS. But instead of the three-hour presentation, producers are adding an extra hour ahead of the telecast that will be streamed only on Paramount+. Plus. The broadcast will be live across the country starting at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard, 4 p.m. Pacific Standard, and the main event will be live at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. There's no word on a host. Kerry Washington on why women must become their own Olivia Popes to fix politics. Kerry Washington is best known for playing political power broker Olivia Pope on TV and the historic series Scandal, a character who became renowned for her ability to get things done. So she was honored but also disturbed when Olivia Pope began trending on Twitter the morning after the 2016 election. People were asking the TV character to come and save the day. The reason we got into this situation is because we believed a person on television could fix things. And the only way we can save our democracy is if we realize we are the Olivia Popes of our communities and of our families. Washington told Katie Couric at Times Woman of the Year event to celebrate International Women's Day on Tuesday. Washington graced the cover of Times inaugural Women of the Year issue because of her dedication to building democracy. Her production company, Simpson Street Media, shines a light on stories of VIPO 
POC women in particular in the hopes of convincing her audiences that anyone can be the hero of their own story. And last year, she created the Vision to Power cohort, which supports grassroots organizations that empower marginalized groups and do democracy building work. Washington stumped for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris during the 2020 election and worked with grassroots organizations and politicians like Stacey Abrams during the Senate runoffs in Georgia. When Washington was cast in the role of DC fixer Olivia Pope, she was the first black woman to lead a network television drama in 38 years. A decade after its debut, Shonda Rhimes' series has had a long-standing impact on the culture. Its abortion episode, the first time the procedure was shown on network television, broke barriers. Washington paved the way for other BIPOC female leads on the network TV, from Viola Davis on How to Get Away with Murder to Priyanka Chopra on Quantico. The Hyphenate also spoke about her time playing another iconic feminist hero, Anita Hill, in the HBO movie Confirmation. Hill bravely testified that she experienced sexual harassment at the hands of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas during his confirmation hearings in 1991. Though Thomas was confirmed, Hill's testimony brought the conversation about sexual harassment to the forefront of culture. I had some young people say to me, oh yeah, Anita Hill, she lost, right? She remembers. And there was nothing to lose. She gave her truth. That person still sits on the Supreme Court. But the number of women who ran for Congress for the following year, the number of women who stepped into power, the cultures that were being transformed by suddenly having sexual harassment training, or in the way which you say something is happening to me that I'm not okay with, that is amazing. Washington produced the project as well as starred in it and remembers teaching the young people on set about the importance of Hill's work. She remembers the experience of playing Hill helped her empathize with how difficult it must have been to testify in front of Congress. But she and Hill, who consulted on the project, had a laugh about the power switch on set. I was terrified to sit in a room and look up at all the straight, white, cisgendered men. I really felt her fear says Washington. But this time along, they were all working for me. More in Shondaland, Netflix lands Shonda Rhimes' murder mystery series. Netflix loves Shonda Rhimes and has recently greenlit her new murder mystery series. According to Screen Rant, the Emmy-nominated producer and her longtime partner, Betsy Beers, scores another deal for the popular streaming service after previous hits with Bridgerton, one of the most watched shows of 2022, Inventing Anna, a limited series about a scam artist, Anna Sororkin, who conned thousands of dollars from her victims. Now, Rhyme's production company, Shondaland, is set to roll out yet another series for the streaming giant. The Hollywood Reporter reports that the new murder mystery series, The Residents, will be produced in-house at Netflix with For the People creator Paul William Davies at the helm. The eight-episode whodunit will use Kate Anderson Bowers' New York Times bestselling book, The Residents, Inside the Private World of the White House, as inspiration for the Rhymes-produced series. The nonfiction expose details first-hand accounts of the expansive staff of hard-working maids and butlers who serve the tenants of the White House and their very important important guests. Rhyme's new series will place a murder at the center of this world, a conceit that has previously crossed the big screen with Murder at 1600, starring Wesley Snipes. Shonda Rhimes has a track record of inserting drama at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, as seen with the ABC hit show Scandal, which revolved around a relationship between a cunning Washington, D.C. fixer, Kerry Washington, and the President of the United States, Tony Goodwin. The official long line of the residents reads, 132 rooms, 157 suspects, one dead body, one wildly eccentric detective, one disastrous state dinner, the residence is a screwball whodunit set in the upstairs, downstairs, and backstairs of the White House among the eclectic staff of the world's most famous mansion. No additional details about casting or crew for the upcoming show have been announced. A Shonda Rhimes project usually never misses, so I'm excited to see this new miniseries. I've been watching Inventing Anna, and that is a really good show. Funny enough, I remember when Anna Delvey was in the newspapers in New York. I think I first heard about her in a Page Six article. So it's funny to see her story turned into a miniseries. Do you guys like Shonda Rhimes and her shows? Comment below your favorite Shonda Rhimes show. Well, that's it for Red Carpet Fly's News on the Fly. Please like, follow, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Red Carpet Fly. And also follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Red Carpet Fly. And until tomorrow, always stay fly.